millions of Americans are retiring each year. Today, I talk one-on-one -on -one with Shatika Husser of Shatika Husser Financial Solutions for tips on if you want to retire this year for this edition of Quentin's Full Subs. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Full Subs on Facebook. Shatika Husser, welcome to Quentin's Full Subs. Great to be here. Appreciate it greatly. Needless to say, you are a re retirement consultant, a benefits broker, and the founder and CEO of Shatika Husser Financial Solutions, whose mission is to educate and empower clients to make informed decisions around tax-free, full-time retirement positioning and many benefits available to them for the financial security and retirement and beyond. So tell me, Ms. Husser, what's new, what's now with Shatika Husser Financial Solutions? Well, right now we continue to work with clients to make sure that they are in the best possible position as it relates to having that tax-free retirement income for the rest of their life, as well as having benefits. Most people uh, are not aware of what they don't know uh, when they have these different traditional plans. So we're just continuing to educate the community, do uh, master classes, courses, and those types of things so that we can make sure that we get the word out about how to properly position for retirement. Position for retirement now? Yes. So making sure that individuals have income that they will not outlive, mm. along with benefits. Sure. So those benefits include long-term care, making sure that they have a plan that's going to allow them to be able to use emergency funds, having a death benefit, you know, making sure that they can uh, pay off all their debt you know, on their way to retirement, because you don't have to do one or the other. You can actually be paying off your debt while you're building your retirement portfolio at the same time. And so what we do is we educate people how to do that properly. We teach the steps to financial freedom, which is ultimately the reason why most people are still working uh, that want to or desire to have a full-time retirement. Not everyone does, but we want to make sure that they have that option. And in doing so, we educate them so that they can be in the right position actually build that retirement portfolio in today's world? How do you build that retirement portfolio? So honestly, it's going to be a plethora of different ways that you can build a, a retirement portfolio. So it depends on the individual's risk tolerance, um, their budget, and then of course their desired outcome. So for some that might look like, you know, real estate investing coupled with, uh, you know, different types of retirement accounts that may include, uh, mutual funds of some sort, stocks, life insurance, annuities. It's a plethora of different ways that you can build your account. Uh, it just a matter, it just like I said, depends on a person's risk tolerance and what they're trying to accomplish. So what we do is a needs analysis to deep dive into, well, you know, what the individual's outcomes are or desired outcomes are, and what their budgets are, and what 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 assets do they have. So depending on the assets they've already been able to procure, some want to do future assets, but we do that in a way that. They can have tax free income. For example, somebody buying a real estate how you know, real estate portfolio, or I should say purchasing a home, um, for the purpose of investing. Well, we would help them structure that inside of like a life insurance policy so that they can have their money twice. So they can use their money not only inside of their retirement portfolio, but also as you know, maybe for um you know purchasing more assets or increasing their portfolio. So those are some of the things that we, uh, I apologize for that. Um, but they, this, these are some of the ways that individuals primarily look at leveraging what they have and their, their portfolio so that they can be able to maximize their income and their benefits at the same time. So instead of just buying say a real estate property, that will only give you income. You can buy a life insurance policy that's going to be able to give you long-term care plan. And you can purchase out of the cash value that the life insurance policy bills. You can purchase out of that a property and still be able to have those funds be compounding inside of that account as if it never left while you have a portfolio growing outside of that account. So it's your, like your money's in two different spots. It's yeah. on the property and it's also inside a life insurance policy. That's just one case. Some people like, you know, they, they may want just to liquidate it, liquidate their, say, 401k to, you know, purchase uh, some type of business, you know, something of that nature. They may not want to do real estate. They may not, may not want to do life insurance. 
Um, it just depends on the individual. So it's a lot of different strategies that we use based on an individual's desired outcome to be able to get them that. And what we do is we begin with the end in mind. We ask them, what is your age, you know, your desired age for your retirement? Once we determine what their desired age is, okay, well, how much income do you want to have each month? And then once we determine that, we can backward plan with a strategy that's best suitable, right, for, for the needs of what they're trying. Because some may have to have, come more aggressively with a lot more than what they bargained for. So if they started too late, let's say maybe they started 47 instead of 32, you know, or 25. Well, that's more money that you're coming. So we teach people that the longer you wait, the more money you have to bring to the table to be able to design your lifetime income. What we ideally do is help people with a private pension plan. So we're helping them to design something that's going to supplement Social Security if it's still going to be around because it may not. So economists say Social Security may not be around from between 2025 and 2034. We don't know how, you know when that's going to happen. But should that happen, what are people going to do? That's the reason why we are trying to get in front of this problem that most people are turning a blind eye to, that they just, they don't really understand. And so we supplement or replace Social Security with your own private pension plan that we help you design with the end in mind. Wow. Great points, by the way. But let me ask you this, Ms. Shatika. What is the typical age of retirement in today's society? That's a good question. So the typical age, most people are really waiting until they're 60, 65, yeah. honestly, because most people, they, they see that, you know, they want to continue to work because they feel like if they start working, life is boring, is you know, they might die, things of that nature. And a lot of people do, unfortunately, pass away once they go into the retirement mode. Um, so a lot of people just continue to work. So retirement, I often say it's not an age, it's an income. So you should at least be able to design yourself an income. Should you want to supplement or maybe you want to take a break, maybe you want to take a few breaks during that reti those retirement years per the you know society, it may not be when you want to retire, but it, it, it should be your choice. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be where you're obligated to have to work. Right. And that's what, that's the only thing we're trying to do to help people. You talk about obviously the economists and obviously they talk about the inflation, how that's affecting people with their mortgages and their obviously grocery board, uh, grocery bills, that is, and gas prices. How do you actually maximize your income in this particular situation? Good question. So we actually help people design what's called, um, we, we like to call it self-banking. Yeah. Um, so we use structured policy in the example I, I previously mentioned. Yeah. So people are able to pay off bills at the same time as them actually putting into a fund that's going to be building for their retirement. Because how we do is we structure it to not be death benefit focused, but to be cash value focused. So we give them the minimum kept, you know, death benefit to structure it so that they can have the greatest amount of cash value. Now, as that cash value is building, they're able to pay off their debt. But oh, by the way, by the paying off their debt, they're still compounding money inside of their policy at the same time. There's no other place you can put your money that you're going to be able to still have it work for you compounding while you're paying off debt, except for a permanent cash value policy. So to your point, that's how they're able to stretch the funds. Oh, okay. What is the typical, I know you have a lot of clients that come into your office for that particular reason, but how do you, what is the typical cash value? Oh, well, yeah, honestly, it depends on how this being funded. So many variables here, mm. you know, because it really does depend on their age. So the older they become, um, for some, that's going to, depending on how the policy is structured, will determine how much the fees are going to be within that policy. Um, although policies are actually 30 to 50% less in fees than any type of mutual fund plan or 401k. And that's, like, that's why a lot of people have pivoted out of those types of plans, you know, traditional employer plans, because they are mutual fund based, which means that they have higher fees. They're not going to be growing tax free. So that tax free growth inside of that uh, life insurance policy is now being able to be used towards their retirement versus paying to Uncle Sam, right? So um, to, to answer your question, you know, the typical cash flow is really going to depend on how aggressive that person is in funding it, right? I mean, you can, we can see hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash value, right? By the time you're 65, for example, I did uh, a case study with a young man, 33 years old, is giving some quick numbers, you know, he's going to put away, you know, about 800, excuse me, $700 a month. By the time he's 65, he's going to have already paid off all of his debt. You know, in, in fact, he could pay off his debt in the first eight years because he would have accrued $65,000 inside of that. So what we were able to do is to structure the policy to be able to show individuals by this year, you can be debt free. 
by this year, this is what you, so by the time you retire at 60, 65, whatever age you desire, this is how much cash value you're going to have based on the fact that you're putting X amount of dollars inside of this policy every single month. Yep. And so we project what it's going to be based off of a very conservative number, like 6.5%. Okay. Some policies are, we've seen them as high as 28%. You know, there are some that come with caps. You know, it just depends on what carrier you would, what, how you're structuring the indexes inside of that policy, how you structure the policy itself, rather it be an, a level policy where it's being paid the exact same amount from the day you start to the day you stop, or what we call B increasing, where you start with a very small death benefit and it grows as you age. That is the that is the preferred retirement style, um, you know, way of building that policy. I mean, I, I'm looking at a lot of people, and my mom is one of those people who actually are retired. But what is a typical retirement style from your perspective? And what, in what way are you asking? Yeah, in, gener yeah, in generalities, what exactly is that retirement style? I mean, it, 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 like I said, you're, you're asking a lot. Of, and so these are, re, are subjective. So I feel like the average person wants to have an income that's going to be able to outpay, I should say, but there's no gap. And so my, my solution is to, to come and make sure there's no gap. All right. Because if you, for easy numbers, $100,000, if you make that today, you're going to be living off of 40% of that, which is $40,000 in retirement. How are you going to find the other 60000 if you're going to stay at the exact same debt level? So unless you downsize your, your retirement lifestyle, instead of upgrading and, and doing these lavish trips, lavish sports, hobbies, such as the golfing, if you downgrade and lessen your, your burdens or if you pay off some things, right, it, it, it's going to determine what you need. The average person needs between 70 and 95% of whatever their income is. So for that person that makes a hundred thousand, they'll need to see seventy thousand and ninety-five thousand. If they have a, a social security because they paid into a system and not their business, they'll have about forty thousand coming from Uncle Sam if that's still around. So they have to make up for that other twenty thousand to you know, was it I said 70 percent to ninety-five. Yes. So they're gonna have that other thirty to you know um I said forty thousand, so that's seventy so 30 to 50, 30 to 50%, you know, 30,000 more, which is 70 to another 50,000. Okay. Which is 90 right. or 55,000, which is the 95 I said. Right. So anywhere between 70 and 95% of that hundred thousand they're going to need. So they got to figure out how to make that money work. So rather it's a permanent cash value policy, real estate investing, you know, the list goes on. How are you going to supplement that income so that you can still be able to live and not outlive, which is the biggest fear besides dying is outliving the money that you have. Because with advances, advancements in medical technology, people are living a lot longer. So the average person is going to need 25 to 30 years of retirement money, funds. So for some, that might be partial retirement. Others, that might mean full-time retirement, depending on how well they did with, again, putting away those funds at an early age. So we encourage people to start early, put away as much as you can, um, just to take care of your older self. If you know that your lifestyle in, in retirement is going to be one where you're going to live a very lavish retirement lifestyle. Some, that's not the case. It just depends on the individual. And so I think yes. typical average, you know, people want to travel. Most of my clients want to travel. Right. So they need enough money that's going to be able to sustain their lifestyle and allow them to travel X amount of times per year, rather that's quarterly annually, you know, and, and all that's determined in the pre-work that we do before we even start with any type of retirement plan. And the lifestyle sustainability that you just mentioned is what led to my initial question about what is a retirement style. But let me ask you, what is it more popular today? Is it partial or is it full-time retirement? I think it's more partial until like 65. Mm. I think that people want to start out, you know, continuing to work because they get like immediate boredom. Yes. And then they say, well, you know what? I can be, I, I want to just relax. I just want to, you know, coast it on out of here. Um, you know, when I look at the different clients, uh, the average one, they'll work. A lot of people want to work until they're 70 because honestly, the longer you wait to turn your social security on, the more money you get, right? So the average person knows that and it stops increasing at the age of 70, right? So 
if you can continue to work until you're 70, now you can stop at 70. You have the maximum amount of money that you're going to receive in Social Security at the age of 70. You can start and do what's called, you know, like pre you know, retirement, so to speak, and start at the youngest age of 62, but you're going to have the least amount of money coming to you for the rest of your life. Once it's turned on, it's turned on. That amount is going to be sustained for the rest of your life. So the individuals know, know that. And so a lot of people, you know, they, I, I have a young lady who said, well, you know what? I don't know that I want to do permanent life cash, cash value policy. I, I think I just want to turn my social security on and continue to work. And she, she said, I'd rather just figure it out. That's everybody's, you know, that's everyone's, um, just depends on what they feel like they can do. She feels like her money that she makes her social security, she can flip it, you know, a lot of times over other people. I know they can take the same social security and lose every, every last bit of it and, and it never grows. So let the professionals do what they do. Cause you know, we understand how this money works, so to speak, you know, and you know, we can't give any guarantees, but we can give you some really strong predictability based on trend analysis, because trends are, are really, what, where is that, right? So somebody that has once traded, I was a previous trader, I was a previous real estate investor, I did stocks, you know, I did it all before I started doing what I'm doing today, helping people with retirement. So I understand the different types of plans, what they can provide you, the risks involved in all of them, and how they want to flow as it relates to your retirement. So the closer we get to retirement, the less risk we want to have in our portfolio, so that we can have a sustained you know, predictable outcome uh, as because can you afford to keep keep uh, working if the pandemic happens over and over and over again, right? So let's say, and you know, in the, in the past few years in our country, we've had two, you know, times of turbulence, you know, in our economy. The first time was five years, excuse me, eight years. The second time was five years in the last, you know, 20 years. And so in that, with that being said, would you have been able to wait and wait for your money to, to rebound and give you your money back for eight years. So that means you have to continue to work for eight years for your money to return when you could have just taken the risk out. The main thing I do is I take 100% of the risk away and I don't give you guarantees, but I give you a real strong possibility of what you can expect to see in retirement. And wow. it's very conservative. Yes, ma'am. And two last questions for you, Mr. Tika. So let me ask you this. What other analysis are you and your team looking at as far as trends? Well, when we look at that trends, we're simply looking at the market, right? So how did stocks and mutual funds and all those, how did this S&P 500 is primarily what we're looking at. When we look at trends, S&P 500, because when we look at the different portfolios that we provide clients, especially with, with it being index products, index meaning that it's going to be, be based on how the S&P 500 has performed in the last 10, 20, 30 years to determine how it's going to perform in the future. Past results don't equal future results. We can't make no guarantees, but we can give you a real good estimate uh, based on how it's been trending and what you can expect. So, for example, the past you know twenty years, it's been about ten to twelve percent, you know, increases. So we expect you to be able to get that if we did strict purely S and P five hundred analysis, and you had no caps inside of your your um, your growth of your account. Uh, we have to look at all those types of things, caps and participation rates, those types of things. Um, so really, to answer your question, I mean, that's really a, depending on um, the S&P 500 primarily when we look at trend analysis. So where do you see the participation participation rate that is heading the next five to 10 years? Uh, well, well, it depends on the interest rate, right? So the participation rates, carriers want to make sure that they compete with inflation. Right. So, for example, right now, there's, you know, a 6.5 percent, what we call multi-year guarantee annuity. And it's high, it's that high only because of where interest rates are. When interest rates, if interest rates are to go down, those rates will come down as well. It really just models the behavior, you know, you know, periodically. For example, we have a 47% rollover bonus on an annuity. So if you roll your money over, you, we would immediately give you 47%. That's only going for, that's only going until August of 26. Mm. And so an individual have to get in where they fit in quickly to be able to take advantage of these types of opportunities while interest rates are where they are, because when they de deflate, so will those participation rates to your point, right? So we expect that, of course, we have been in the market correction and the market correction is going up and down, turbulent. And so we expect it to continue to be about where it's at, but eventually it is going to have that bubble again where it's going to fall. And that's when particip particip participation rates are increasing. Now, when they go back, when they start going back up, the participation rates are going to come down. 
Does that make sense? So yes, they're ma'am. opposite of where the interest rates are because the only thing it wants to do is compete with inflation and carriers are competing for the business of the client by being more and more competitive. So I'm a broker. I'm going to all different competitors. I know what's the highest rates out there for, you know, a multi-year guaranteed annuity for the rollover bonus for the, you know, uh, indexes that's inside of these different types of plans, participation rates to your point. So all these, you know, to be a broker, you need to understand all of the different carriers that are out there. What are they offering? I have software that shows me at any given snapshot of a time when a client comes and we do an application. Okay, this is the best rate right now for this in this particular carrier for this type of account. Rather it be that multi-year guarantee. Some people don't want risk. They just want a fixed amount. So if you want multi-year guarantee, then it's going to be this particular carrier at this rate. You see what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. So that's pretty much what we do to, to help make sure that we mitigate the risk, but also um, give them peace of mind and financial security. What other risks do you predict, predict will happen next? Other risks? Yes, ma'am. Um, honestly, I haven't predicted any other risk besides just you know individuals that have some type of real estate portfolio. I would say they need to hold on to it because I feel like it's not going to be a risk. It's going it's to keep climbing. I feel like it's going to keep growing um, no matter what it looks like for maybe little small battles of, of, of decreases. I feel like, of course, it's going to continue to, 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 to go higher, right? In other words, I expect there to continue to be a climax and acceleration and uh, home sale prices. And so I don't see risk. I see growth. Okay. I see primarily growth. I see that, yes, we're going to have, we're having or experiencing the market correction, but then it's going to continue to go north like it's always been. And, and I wanted to ask you this earlier, Mr. Deacon, but let me ask you this. What are the five reasons people want to retire today? Well, people want, um, for one, they want more time with their family. They want less stress. They want better health. They want to, have peace of mind. Um, most people want to work for a cause and working in a career doesn't always align with their causes and the passions that they have. So rather they, you know, want to go and, you know, help with sh- in a shelter or in their church or um, to get back to their community. Um, you know, it's just working a lot of times gets in the way of people's vision, personal life vision and life mission. And so I think that's primarily the reason why a lot of people move into a space of retirement, but not to retire, to expire, as, as I, I often say, but they retire to become the best version of themselves, to give back to the society and make an impact in the, in the earth before they leave, right? Because most of the years have been spent on somebody's job building somebody else's dream. A lot of, of them, 95% of them, according to um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki, 95% of people are trading time for money, rather be self-employed or, you know, working for a W-2. Only 5% of business owners and interest and uh, investors, only 5%. And so most people, they want to get into that becoming an investor or, you know, becoming a business owner or, uh, you know, just doing their life's work basically as a uh, transit before they transition out. Um, But ideally they want the time with their family. They want to have time to put themselves you know, a lot of people want that me time. Um, they want to be able to pamper themselves. Of course, that gets boring after a while for a lot of people. But ideally, they want to have that option and they don't want to be stretched going into the latter part of their lifestyle. You know what I mean? Yes, ma'am. So when, when it comes to your clients, what do they want more? Do they want do those clients want to become investors or business owners? No, most of them, honestly, they, they want to retire. They just want to relax. <laughs> the majority of them want to relax and um, do work for a cause, a nonprofit, okay. things of that, yeah, that nature. Yes, ma'am. Well, Shatika Husser was Shatika Husser Financial Solutions. Thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you for that, allowing me this opportunity. I'm Shatika Husser with Shatika Husser Financial Solutions, where we help you retire before you expire. So if that's what you desire and what you aspire. We are the ones you hire. Our goal really is to get your bank account on fire with a whole lot of lifetime tax free retirement income. That you will not outlive. Retirement is not an age, it's an income. Thank you for your time.